Chase Briscoe, the Tony Stewart fanatic turned professional cup series driver, was expected to have a rookie season like his idol. That was before Stewart Haas Racing became a total dishoster, causing Chase Briscoe to put up numbers closer to Danica Patrick. 2022 saw him fit the Tony Stewart role more with a livery mistaken for 2011. Briscoe in this second season carried the heart and soul of a champion. He wasn't afraid to go to Home Depot to throw the kitchen sink at his race car to make it the best it could be. And also, with the help of his offensive line in a few instances, he would turn around his young Cup Series career. NRF Productions proudly presents 180 in NASCAR performance, Chase Briscoe 2021-2022. Chase Briscoe grew up just like any Tony Stewart fan, telling his teachers in class that he wanted to be a NASCAR driver when he grew up, playing NR 2003, and always choosing that vivid Tangelo number 20 Monte Carlo, doing all this while wearing his replica helmet and uniform plastered with Home Depot logos. Chase Briscoe, he had an Indiana blue collar work ethic that got him opportunities, like the one he got with SHR that led to his 9-win 2020 Xfinity campaign. This dream season right here would make his childhood fantasies become reality. Chase Briscoe inherited a 14 team that had some decent seasons and decent chemistry with the larger-than-life Clint Boyer gluing the team together. Making the NASCAR playoffs in year one was more than plausible when you think of this. Even with Kevin Harvick largely going out there winning races, Stuart Haas Racing was the dominant organization two of the last three seasons. Chase Briscoe's new crew chief, Johnny Klausmeyer, had never missed the postseason since pairing up with Eric Amarola in 2018. If Cole Custer of all drivers could win a race with the rebuilding 41 team, why couldn't Chase Briscoe? Why couldn't he reap even greater fruits with a more structured, established core on the number 14? They say history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. For Chase Briscoe, 2021 was set to be just like 1999. So Stuart Haas Racing as an organization was prepped for the grind of this 2021 season. They were going to use their strength of superb setups and aerodynamics to kill their competition like they did in 2018 and 2020. Well, guess what? Weeks before teams were set to bring their off-season's work to Daytona, NASCAR made it official. The wheel template would be re-added to the tech process. The parody of the Cup Garage was unparalleled, but somebody's gotta take the stumble backwards. Stuart Haas Racing was muzzled aerodynamically all season long, and it ruined the rookie season of one of NASCAR's most hyped up prospects at least in the last three years. Chase Briscoe was no longer driving the smoothest, best handling equipment like he did with SHR on Saturdays. And we all know a rookie with poor handling cars is a car owner's worst nightmare. Tony Stewart and Gene Haas could only cover their eyes as Briscoe tore up the car desperately trying to salvage a spot on the lead lap at Dover. Or at Nashville, where he had a good run going for himself before the brakes said, Hey, I'm a head out, which caused him to crash out of the race. Chase Briscoe's 2021 season is remembered for two things. Number one, the immaculate skill he showed on road courses that got him top 10 finishes at Coda, Road America, and Watkins Glen. And that was almost the same story for the inaugural Indy Road Course, an event that was a catastrophic punch in the wallet for many of the race teams. Oh, mayhem! And there's millions and millions and millions of dollars of damage here. Chase Briscoe had the yellow rookie stripes, but if you were a casual NASCAR fan, or maybe you just got out of the Indianapolis State Prison from a DUI charge in 2010, and you could mistakenly think Briscoe was Tony Stewart with his performance on that day. Chase Briscoe had a car that could have won this race and locked himself into the 16 driver postseason. I say could have because the 90 degree turn one of chaos would see NASCAR, well, do quintessential NASCAR things. Chase Briscoe was penalized, but for whatever reason, the message was not relayed back to the driver. And what Chase Briscoe would do next would be his first eye of the storm moment with NASCAR fans and people in the industry. Oh, he's got a spin, did he? Did he? Denny Hamlin was none too pleased while his former teammate, Tony Stewart, shared a different sentiment as he was proud of his younger driver for having the courage to stand up for himself. His feud with Denny Hamlin continued and would be the typical generational clash of old versus young. 
The polarity of styles meshed again at Texas. This time, not only did Denny Hamlin go scorched earth on the rookie. But then a thumb wrestle after the race, not in an authentic way, which is face to face, mano on mano. Oh no, they did this on Instagram of all places. Chase Briscoe ended his rookie campaign with a wreck in the season finale 500, which capped off a disappointing rookie season. It's a shame because all signs at the beginning of 2021 pointed to success because of his maturity to abstain from incident while being aggressive enough to pursue the taste of victory. But because of short of horsepower racing, excuse me, Stuart Haas racing, Chase Briscoe led the 14 team to a points rank 11 positions worse than 2020. Plus, he did something for the first time since Danica Patrick in 2016. He failed to finish at least one oval race in the top 10. The disaster of a 2021 campaign for Stuart Haas Racing came with optimism for 2022. The next generation car meant a clean slate and also meant that Stuart Haas Racing, even if they tried, they couldn't screw up the aerodynamics as bad as they did in 2021. The sophomore season saw Chase Briscoe become more cultured in his identity primarily driving a red and black number 14 thanks to new anchor sponsor Mahindra Tractors. To start the season, Briscoe was racing more Tony Stewart-esque by earning his first top 10 at an oval in the Daytona 500, leading a career-high 20 laps at Auto Club. His laps led in that race ended up being more than his previous 37 starts combined. Then rolling the dice at Las Vegas to block a two-time NASCAR Cup Series champion for position. The Phoenix Raceway, meanwhile, has historically been a challenge for young Chase Briscoe. It was a canyon-sized mountain to overcome, but through consistency and a fast pit sequence, Chase was able to take the lead from Chase with 83 laps to go. On an afternoon where it was hard to pass, the winless Chase was able to keep the Cup Series champion Chase at bay. With 20 to go, it was a jockey between three drivers looking for their first win. Blue-collar watermelon farmer Ross Chastain was going to fight for every inch of real estate, but so was Chase Briscoe. On March 13, 2022, you could not pinch Chase Briscoe hard enough to make him believe that this was all fake. Driving for his boyhood idol, Tony Stewart, Chase Briscoe becomes the 200th winner in the history of the NASCAR Cup Series. On that day in Avondale, Arizona, we learned two things. Chase Briscoe has the responsibility necessary to wield one of the most powerful legacies in motorsport, and that Mike Joy has a thing for tractors. That tractor's sexy. Now that Chase Briscoe had his first win, his playoff fate was all but solidified in March. Because of that, Chase Briscoe and the 14 team, they adapted this checkers or wreckers style mentality. Drive it in deep and hope it sticks. Go! Down to the bottom, slides up in two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For the Coca-Cola 600, Chase Briscoe adapted a similar move on the defending NASCAR Cup Series champion, but to no avail. In the heat of the summer, Chase Briscoe did indeed score his first pole award, despite some ill will in Illinois the next day during the race that knocked him out of contention. Because of that, from his checkers or wreckers move at the Bristol Dirt Race to the end of the regular season, I kid you not here, Chase Briscoe had just one top 10 finish. My goodness, I'm sure you guys are wondering, why am I doing a 180 in performance video? This is legendarily bad. It's almost so bad to the point that he was on the brink of being knocked out of the playoffs as potentially the lowest winner in points. Chase Briscoe limped himself into the postseason where now, for the first time since March, races mattered. Chase Briscoe got himself a taste of deja vu when the regular season champion Chase Elliott pushed the issue in stage one of the Southern 500. What, Elliott, what are you thinking? Briscoe never recovered and finished 27th. Now panic alarms, they would be ringing if this were say the round of eight, but this is only the round of 16. This round is literally who makes the least and less dramatic mistakes. That's literally all you need to do to advance to the round of 12, and yet teams year after year screw themselves over in humiliating ways. 
Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, and teammate Kevin Harvick made his life so much easier to the point where he just needed two sub top 10 finishes to transfer. So for this 180 in performance story, it really kicks into gear once we get deeper into this postseason as Chase Briscoe is now fighting for his playoff life in the round of 12. Chase Briscoe knew he needed to rise to the occasion. He needed to do something that he hadn't done since May. Get a top 10 finish, just do it Briscoe. And at Texas, it was looking like Chase Briscoe was going to have an awful finish. In fact, he joked on the rain delay, he was planning on going to Home Depot to throw the kitchen sink at his race car. But in a real sign of maturity by Chase Briscoe and Johnny Klausmeyer, they would rally at Texas to get a fifth place finish. And then the next week they got a top 10 at Talladega. Even then, he still found himself 13 points below the cut line. For a driver like Chase Briscoe, the Charlotte Roval was the perfect destination for an elimination race. The chaos of this race saw Daniel Suarez and Kyle Larson lose their advantages points-wise, and now the Indiana Hoosier was on offense just like his hometown Indianapolis Colts. And the drive that we would see from Chase Briscoe was not that of a rookie making constant mistakes like he did at the Indy Road Course in 2021, but rather a veteran, rather a Tony Stewart, putting it all on the line to get everything out of his number 14 car. Cole Custer throwing a block right there on everybody. Briscoe with a huge drive into the rear chicane. The fight for the final transfer spot. Briscoe, oh, he's done it. He's eliminated the reigning champion. That drive from Chase Briscoe left the Charlotte crowd stunned silent. Did Cole Custer really have a flat tire? I think maybe we should ask Clint Boyer about that. I bet it's hot in there. It just... oh, yeah. Though from this miracle run, Chase Briscoe would have quite a bit of critics come his way. Kyle Larson getting eliminated by Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe, he's not even gonna make it to the championship. He's gonna get eliminated after this round, I guarantee it, and it's, it's unfair. Look, the round of eight here was going to be Chase Briscoe's toughest challenge. He didn't have the experience or the playoff points, and SHR certainly didn't have the speed. Johnny Klausmeyer, he understood this perfectly, and he stuck with a core principle that has been preached by Larry McReynolds. If you do what the leaders do, you are going to follow the leaders. At Las Vegas, Chase Briscoe gained some track position on a restart, looked to steal a spot into the championship before Ross Chastain and Joey Logano on fresher tires took command. Homestead, we didn't even get to see what tricks Klausmeyer would have up his sleeve because Briscoe had a wicked handling car all day, pushed the issue a bit too much to DNF out of the race. And that meant Martinsville was winner bust, baby, and for a good 20 laps, it looked like Chase Briscoe was going to be 2022's Ryan Newman. Not only would Johnny Klausmeyer go for an all, but believe it or not, guys, it nearly paid off even with all the changes that NASCAR and Goodyear made before this race after the cataclysmic spring race. All thanks to Cole Custer staying out to try to play offensive tackle for Chase Briscoe. It's remarkable to think this move almost worked. If this were the spring race, Christopher Bell doesn't even get close enough to move him out of the way. Briscoe advances. The NASCAR world has a complete meltdown with Chase Briscoe advancing to the championship four. Instead, they would all completely go insane when Ross Chastain had his Hail Melon move. Chase Briscoe would return to Phoenix unable to cap off a season sweep with the Bill France Cup. He would have himself a decent performance, yes, but come on guys, we all know that this race is rigged. The championship, it's always got to be the guy that wins the championship. At least, that's what Ryan Blaney fans have told me in the past couple months. Chase Briscoe's sophomore season saw him check off the important boxes, win his first race, make it to the round of eight, get his first top 10 on an oval. This 2022 season by Chase Briscoe was defined by the positive aspects of his talent, the core 14 team making necessary decisions, and obviously Cole Custer acting like he was Chase Briscoe's offensive lineman when everything was on the line. Chase Briscoe raced like his idol Tony Stewart in many ways, a 180 in performance from his rookie stripes campaign. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the 180 in performance straight out of a movie, Ross Chastain's from 2021 to 2022, or you can turn back the clock to look at Clint Boyer's freshman sophomore improvement from 2006 to 2007. Other than that, this is Nathan for NRF Productions, 
Life's a beach and then you drive.